Hey everybody, this is uh, Pan4 LLC. Uh, let that sink in with Leslie Ellis. All right, all right, all right. Thank you for that, Eric. Welcome everyone to Let That Sink In. Tonight's guest is Leslie Ellis. Um, this is a replay of a replay. Um, now that uh, now that um, uh, what's this crazy app called Clubhouse has added more features, uh, we wanted to redo our earlier interviews with all of the full features so that everybody can benefit from it, uh, especially the feature of replay. Uh, what we do now is that um, after we give our interview here on Clubhouse, we also distribute it uh, via podcast on all of the regular podcast platforms, uh, as well as on YouTube and Spotify. So we wanted to make sure um, our artists have the most exposure possible. So great, Leslie, how are you today? I'm just great, good to be here. I hear you, I hear you. How's, um, how's the weather so far? <laughs> it's like unbelievably cold which is very strange for nashville and it snowed for the like, the fourth time today but it you know it wasn't significant snow but it's it's just crazy weather <laughs> I hear how about you. how is it there in philadelphia in philly well you know it was a little crazy um they said flurries so i said okay and i stepped outside and i'm like this is not flurries uh this is snow this is like, actual snow. You guys are gonna get hit, aren't you? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I you know, I guess we're due. Last time I remember a large snowstorm was when I was a kid. I think and they say like around seventy eight was like the last good blizzard. I remember seventy eight. Oh my lord. We didn't have school for a week. <laughs> exactly. So uh I I I don't think it'll be like that this time, but yeah. it'll be something. So, you know. And, and then we'll forget about this when summertime comes and we'll be crying about how hot it is. Yeah, I know I will. <laughs> exactly. That's so true. <laughs> so so let's see here. So you touched on our um, some of our, uh, our intro questions here. Um, the name, of course, is uh, Miss Leslie Ellis. Um, your location currently is Nashville, Tennessee. Yep, uh, Music City. Yes, Music City. Um, what was the other name, the, the alley or the row? Oh, Music Row is is the location of town where um, it historically all of the labels and publishers used to be. It's two streets, 16th and 17th Avenue, and um, they had publishing companies in these old um, craftsman style bungalows, and people would just walk from office to office playing music live. And it's not like that anymore, but that's how it right. was, and that's where the term Music Row comes from. That's cool. That's cool. And and that's how um most of the mecca of media places are. Um, LA, um, New York for music for the most part. Um, LA for media such as film and TV. And Nashville is the mecca of songwriting. Yeah, and, it really is. Yeah. And that's cool. You know, you can't beat proximity. Proximity always wins. So you must be you present know. to win. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's cool. And, and you, you mentioned that's a little bit different now? Yeah, well, I, I moved here in 2003, uh, and I've only heard about how the way it used to be from my husband, who is a writer, who was a hit writer, and, you know, would do this thing where he'd just take his guitar and walk around to different offices and sit and play music with people and say, oh, I got a new one and play it. And then I'll come to the studio tonight and we'll, we'll record that on Kenny Rogers. <laughs> wow. And that just doesn't happen now. It's much more of a kind of political system, unfortunately. Um, oh, here. Wow. Yeah. It's just not the, not the way that legend has, has it that I've heard about. Right. That's interesting. I thought you were going to say technology killed it, but um, politics is a downer too sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, technology hasn't done a lot for, those of us in the business, a lot of good stuff. I mean, some people are, you know, there are a handful of people who are really um, thriving, but I think for the rest of us, it's pretty, pretty hard compared with 
you know, what it used to be, which was really live. And if you showed up and you hustled, you were going to get somewhere. Now it's all in a box and it's, it's per perplexing. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. They're very true. Yeah. It used to be about people, you know. Right. Yeah. It used yeah. to be the, the, uh, the things to be, you know, it's, it's about the people, it's about the music. And now it's about whoever has the most tools and money. So, yeah. 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 I don't want to get depressing. No. Uh, no. <laughs> but it's so. I'm still, I'm, I'm adapting. I'm doing my best to learn uh, yeah. the it, ways of the new world. The, the technology in the, I guess, what, early 70s, late 80s, when the electronic keyboard and things of that sort came out, and the music, I don't know, when the music was harder to make, the quality was better. Yeah. Um, and, and But that's relative, you know, because the, the new generation grew up on an easier way to make music, and to them, their music sounds great. <laughs> well, I mean, so, it's all, I mean, that's the thing about music is it's all, you know, beauty is in the ear right. of the beholder so to speak i mean it it, it is really so personal and right. um and one of the things that i love about old school music is the raw music if you listen to aretha franklin records right that are not tuned or you could go back further and listen to uh the old crooners of the 30s and 40s mm -hmm. they would stand in front of an orchestra Right. And they would That's just right. do it all the way down, no tuning, no punching, no flying, no yeah. nothing. Right. And they really had to have their chops together. And uh, it, to me, that's exciting. But right. yeah, I also kind of grew up in a world where we had to learn how to sing live on a stage and reach the back row. So, right. um, you know. Right. And those, those tools still come in handy because when I speak to a lot of um, artists, the ones that blow me away, are the ones that you can tell their mouth is open, you know, full throated <laughs> singing, not not yeah. the mumble. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a different style. It's a different style. <laughs> I mean, as long as it's vibey, I you know, I, I love a lot of electronic music. I mean, any kind of chill, Buddha bar music, hip right. hop. I just love that stuff. And well, I guess that's more like the '90s, 2000s. But um, I really do love it. I think it's it's really vibey and. I don't know. It's, it's all valid. It's just different. Just changes. That, that's all. That, that's the word different. I yeah. agree with you. It's different. Yeah. So uh, since we, we we dove deep into your well of um, knowledge, so so how many years again have you been in music? God, I have never added it up. I <laughs> <laughs> I started and I, you know, wasn't good enough. Um, I started on Broadway. I went to a conservatory and I studied voice and I studied dance and acting. And then I went to New York and I, I started by acting and, you know, being on stage in shows on Broadway, off Broadway, on tour uh, and all kinds of things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I decided in my late thirties that I was going to go off and, you know, kind of, pursue my dreams of writing and in a kind of folk you know back then um the the new the john colvin and jonathan brooke and a whole slew of new folk musicians were hitting the scene and and so it was a really rich time for the sort of mm -hmm. folk rock scene so a cool. few decades or, i don't know <laughs> i'm old <laughs> time flies time flies understandably just when you're having fun it sounds like you've been having fun doing it having fun Ups and I'm downs. Fun. I'm glad to be here, you know? Right. Glad right. to be here. It's the journey that counts. Yeah. So you mentioned a lot of different uh, genres that you're comfortable with. Um, hmm. This question is always tricky. Uh, which which genre do you, do you, do you currently enjoy being in? In terms of listening to it or? Uh, you're doing you're it. doing it and your your music well i kind of think of myself as a singer songwriter but i also have a love of the kind of cinematic sound and i think that regarding sync i think the world that i'm going to fit into where i feel like i can stand out is in this sort of hallmark movie slash you know rom-com kind mm. of cinematic sound 
um, you know, somewhere in between Sean, somewhere in between Celine Dion and and Sarah McLaughlin. Let's okay. Say. <laughs> well, that's a still that's 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 irrelevant. <laughs> Two relevant singers still. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's so that's still a good voice, and and you know, as, as as we said, we have had interviews with you before, and we played the music, which we'll do today, and it, you know, there's there's nothing short of amazing. The music, the quality, the sound, the, the voice, absolutely. And hearing that you used to do Broadway is always cool because that's, you know, that's the prerequisite. If, new, if you're in the New York area, I mean, even Saturday Night Live, once a month does a high school Broadway skit. And it's like, wow, <laughs> like that's really the rules. <laughs> like you have no choice. <laughs> well, you do come up through the ranks when you do something like that. You know, you really do um, pay your pay your dues and, and come up through the ranks and um, right. it's a great it's a great way to do it because you you kind of gain a lot of skills along the way you know exactly exactly and those skills carry definitely carry oh yeah um, so which uh, pro are you currently with um i am a bmi writer great how's bmi treating you just fine good yeah, yeah. We've, we've had a lot of uh we gathered a lot of data my nerd side saying, and um, we found out that BMI does seem to pay better, uh, especially for full songs. Um, yeah. When it comes to instrumentals, and I believe like compositions, uh, ASCAP is more okay. suited for that. Interesting. Uh, well, yeah. I, I can only speak to the, the kind of um, record world. And I know that historically BMI has been known to pay out uh, better mm -hmm. than, say, ASCAP. My mm -hmm. husband, I, I mentioned, he's um, a hit writer, and on a couple of his songs, he would compare uh, royalties with his writers who were with BMI, his mm -hmm. co-writers, and he was with ASCAP, and he he noticed there was a you know a discrepancy there. So, and that's. And that's really interesting because when I email ASCAP, I, I get a reply end of the day or the next day without mm -hmm. any issues. When I email BMI, mm -hmm. I could just picture them plug it into the old telephone board, switchboard. <laughs> and like, oh my gosh. And like a month later, then I get a reply. And that's I understand. Funny. I assume they run like a bank where they're slow on purpose just to make sure, you know, nothing happens. You know, let's say you change your mind <laughs> or something in between. Um, which, office really, do you, which office do you contact? I'm just curious. All of them. New York, Tennessee. Really? If, okay. if I'm too late for New York, I, I call um, Tennessee. Right. And if I'm too late for Tennessee, I call LA. Gotcha. I've had a lot of luck calling New York, whereas I could be, you know, I'm like, couple of miles away from BMI here in Nashville and I yeah. can't get a response from them but um, <laughs> I always had good luck calling New York but that office seems like it's really on the ball. That's cool that's cool maybe it's just yeah. about by the time I realize I need to I have a question is it's usually it's too late in the evening so I'm playing you know, <laughs> chase the sun in the time zone yeah. so maybe, maybe that's my challenge. But I, I, I do hear, always hear good things about BMI. And, you know, and even BMI's website is a little bit to, to be desired, um, mm -hmm. which is interesting because usually it's a rule of thumb. If we're dealing with um, sync agents and clients and music libraries that have super old flash websites that are old and crickety and, and shows, mm -hmm. episodes of TV shows that's not even on anymore, mm -hmm. you, you run from them. But... It's funny that you say that because I, I was looking up this voice teacher because I still study from time to time, um, mm -hmm. and um, I went to her website and it was like all primary colors and bold, <laughs> thin. It's just no white space at all, and just like no links worked, and just just right. on and on and on and on. And I just right. thought she does not look like a pro. <laughs> does yeah. not look like a pro. Or like it was made with Angel Fire or MySpace or something like. It's, yeah, it's, right. It's like it didn't update it, and you know, for some some people feel well, that's my brand. You know, that's that's that shows my reputation. That's how long I've been in it. Um, mm -hmm. But but I, you want a, a touch of technology, 
just so people know that you can you can actually you know pay them properly <laughs> you want to compete you know? in the world these exactly. days and to do that marketing wise you really have to have your technology together i think you do, you do. Uh, so um influences uh we spoke up we used to mention everything franklin the queen oh yeah Elizabeth absolutely Slim. you mentioned celine dion the standard mm -hmm. and you also yeah. mentioned um did you mention kylie my, my no no uh, i mentioned Kylie. sarah mclaughlin sarah mclaughlin but i mean it goes back to linda ronstadt yeah. and, um I mean, Aretha Franklin, uh, yeah. Roberta Flack, um, yeah. Maureen McGovern, uh, Gladys Knight. Um, yeah. I grew up like learning by, it's interesting, I grew up kind of learning by emulating singers, singing along with the records. And then uh -huh. and then you, you find your own voice in there yes. after you sort of take off. And, um, um, and of course I sang with Celine, so, so right. that, so that, I'm, I'm partial to her. I mean, she's just a freak of nature. She's so good. Yeah, yeah. And and, and that's a normal progression. You know, uh, Smokey Robinson said he loves Sarah Vaughn. That's why he's singing the high notes. You know? Nice. John Coltrane. I love that. Yeah, John Coltrane loved, um, oh, less, oh my. Like, you know, you, 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 you have to see it first to believe it. So you mm -hmm. have to copy what's in front of you who strikes out at you and then you find your voice you know totally i mean you when i was a child when i started singing and i just you don't you just I, you try things on like a costume you know you right. just try it on right. and then as you start to get older you have different so many influences that sort of merge into a individual thing right and i'm continuing to grow and change because it's fun exactly exactly it's always a process it's a it's a running river it's not a slow meandering exactly. thing it's a, it's a, it's a fast it's a movie process. not a photograph yes i like that yes exactly so your influence your influences um what i mentally tag when i hear those are are women who can sing and you know and that's not saying that there's some women that can't sing but there's a different difference between crooning, um, between holding the note, uh, between uh, entertainers, which I wouldn't really consider singers all the time, you know, we yeah, some hy yeah. hybrids, because um, it's hard to sing and move around and dance, you know. Um, and then there's, you know, the singers, those that stand still and they can sing long notes. And that's what I... Those are the names I heard when you when you said that uh, Linda Von Sprank and yeah. um, things of that sort. You know, I I I enjoy listening to their slow rock because they can hold a note. You know, it, it takes a lot of work. You know, it's it's control that you you just practice, yes. practice, practice. Yes, and yeah. you control the song. Someone doesn't control you. Mm. Yeah, totally. Because it can get out of control really easily <laughs> <laughs> if you're not careful. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah. And and that's why um, also um, I like how you mentioned um, the engineering of music um, goes back very far, not as you know, not as recent as we feel when people complained about the auto tune, which is a standard that's been out there for a very long time. It's just sure. it's just it was just for there for when a singer had an off night, you know, you don't really have to, they did fifty takes and it's like I can't make them do this again. Okay, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to bend this until it sounds like an actual natural note. Okay, yeah. there we go. You know. Well, when I when I sang for Sony Music, um, I would sing uh, for Walter Afanasieff. Um, oh, yeah. He's just huge producer there, and uh, I would sing demos and stuff. I sang on a whole bunch of records too, but I I um I sang demos for him, and mm. I would just go, ah, oh, that sucked. I need to do it again, and he would say, nope. <laughs> that's the vibe that's the vibe and i said oh, it was so pitchy nope that's the vibe he would say so he was going for a vibe he wasn't going for right some sort of perfection in he right. was looking for heart you know soul right. and interpretation so the, the energy of it, you know yeah because yeah. sometimes you try to get too technical you yeah you lose, you lose the vibe the organic part of uh. it 
A hundred percent. So that's cool that he did that. And I, I, I've done that myself. I, I had a singer who just, when I would write songs, lyrics, and music, he would just know how to how, how I wanted it in my head before I even told him. And one night, he just was off. He had a bad night one night, you know? Yeah. And I said, oh, I can fix this. And I fixed it, and it sounded like him again. I almost said his name. <laughs> Oops. Uh, it sounded like him again. So, yeah, you yeah. know, it, that can be used um, to benefit. Yeah. No. I mean, technology has just changed. So now we're all used to hearing everybody in perfect pitch. Because right. as I said, if you go back to the old Aretha records, you know, you're going to hear a live performance. Right. But, um, so now, um, you know, I record my own vocals and I, I tune them, each note by hand, by ear. Nice. Not auto-tune. Because right. sometimes it thinks it knows what it, I want it to sound mm -hmm. like, and it does mm -hmm. not always know what I mm -hmm. want it to sound like. Yeah, so I mean, I think we just have to adapt to, yeah. you know, the standards and the, you know, technology yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Be willing but, to grow. And right. I love technology, you know, so I'm cool. I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah, and, and not be too not to be too heavy handed with you know like like conscientization. Um, oh yeah, 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 totally has its place, but, you know, a little bit too much, and it, you were trying to make it hit with the, the, the beat, and now it was, sounds like robotic, and then you lose the organic feel to it, you know? Totally. So, yeah. Um, so, um, okay, so you're signed with us um, as a placement-only deal. Um, we're only three years old. On average, it takes about five years to get a placement, um, but do you have any other placements outside of us? Um, and when I say placements, I, I I consider um, singing on other people's albums, things of that sort, too. Well, I, I did sing on a lot of Sony albums, and I have a Grammy for singing with Celine Dion on cool. My Heart Will Go On, a little song, just a little ditty. Just a little one. <laughs> just a little one. And I did sync-wise, I sang a song called Six Times Around the Sun that was on a CBS miniseries. Cool. Um, but I didn't write it. It was written by Steve Suskin and Ronnie Cox, but um, I I did that. And then I've had a lot of my original songs recorded uh, by artists, independent artists mostly, but overseas and stuff. Yes. I've had some, some sort of radio hits overseas. Um, nope. blah, 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 blah. You know, I mean, it's a smattering of stuff, but, and I've, I've sung, I've gotten a couple of independent films really 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 independent films <laughs> um <laughs> placements but that's cool i mean come on we're all just uh we're just developing one step right. one listener at a time so it's right. all good and, and you never know when those things get picked up by major distributors and they want you to come back and do it again or who's going to hear it you right. know and say oh okay I like that let's see what she's that. doing now yeah exactly so you just say yeah. yes a lot <laughs> Yes, yes. And and you touched on a note that I, I'm trying to focus on more this year. I was aware, but um, you know me. I'm doing a lot at the same time. Oh, yeah. Know? And I, I really want to have, I really want to shop songs that we have mm -hmm. to major people that need full songs, you know, the, the full project, mm -hmm. you know. And, mm -hmm. I, and, and you mentioned that, and that's, I mentioned that to another younger uh, singer-songwriter, and they turned their face up. They felt like, like we're still in their song. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm exposing you to, to big artists that need music. You know, it's you called can, getting a cut. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a good gig. It's a very good thing, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's exposure. It builds a resume, and it's not like you're doing it for free. Well, I will make sure. <laughs> That it wouldn't be for free. I mean, you know, they oh, no. sometimes the the biz wants you to 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 um, what's the word? Uh, do it for exposure. Yes, but I mean, how many times can you do that? Eventually, no. you need to be paid for your work. So I, I think everyone needs to be paid for their work. It's all valid yeah. and it's all worthy. It's all worth Absolutely. money. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's I'm gonna try to focus more on that this year. So definitely, we have to have a, a side conversation about songs that you feel that we can shop around to managers who need songs. 
Yeah, that's that be absolutely fantastic. I have three billion of them. Awesome. How much time you got, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> I love choice. That's perfect. Ooh. So, so that's that's good, and and that's why I um I uh, I brought on Eric Ziegler so that he can do the sync side of things, and I could explore you know other ways to to land music, you know. So that's really glad. I, I don't think the many times we've talked. I don't think you mentioned that before. So, or, or I wasn't ready to hear it because now I, I'm interested in it. So maybe you said it before. Uh, my perception was different then. But... I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I've done this business in one way, shape, or form for a long time, and my no, elevator no. speech is getting faster no. and faster and faster because <laughs> you have more to talk about. I mean, like you can't get to it all sometimes. Right. 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 You know? It's like updating your resume. They they want you to go higher and higher on the resume instead of going into the details of bullets. But you lose something sometimes when you do that. Yeah, it's true. It's hard to just give a brush of just a wash, you know, right. of of all the stuff you've experienced in life because right. you know if you show up and you pay attention, stuff happens, you know, and you know adventures happen. You gotta be there. Gotta be ready. Yeah. So when do you feel that you fell in love with music? Around what time? Oh boy, my dad is a big music guy and always has been. And he, um, I grew up, you know, and he would get the records of the Beatles and Bob Marley. My dad had like original, like mm. imported Bob Marley records and anybody who was new on the scene, he would get it. And then he also had a lot of classical and uh, jazz. So I, right. I had a very, very diverse music uh, upbringing. And then as a child, I was singing in professional choirs, uh, as wow. well as stuff in school. And you sort of get to, you know, but I've, I've just been in love with music my entire life. A hundred percent. Like it just gets me from point A to point B. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's cool. And we could tell because you are, um, your your voice and style is quite flexible. Um, we're going to play music from different genres tonight, um, and um, it's from from I don't know what to call it, pop ish. Well, what's so up. weird is when she, like I don't know what which one is coming up first, but the one I wrote was two. Right, that's like, the one I'm thinking about. I just about. said, oh, I just said, you know, the cool thing because I had been listening to a lot of his hip hop and his rap stuff on his uh on his uh, artist page mm -hmm. and i said what would be so cool is if we got together a thing like what eminem did when he put in that dido um right. thing right it's like it's like uh, the merging of two worlds to me was just so cool and so right. um i said like I, that's the only example i could come up with um that's the one that's the two one. genres but you know so that's where we were kind of leading, yeah. I guess. And, but the thing is with Dido, she just did Dido on the hook. You, yeah. you, you, the, 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 the scales that you did in there and the, well, we'll discuss it more when the song plays, but I, I just love picking that song apart because that's like, that's like a model, like a ruler for me and how, Sometimes there's no hard, fast genre. It's like, this is just yeah. good music. And I love that. That's exactly what we were just like, no labels. Let's just yeah. see what comes out, you know. And, then, and because of that, it could fit in almost anything because it's good music. Cool. I mean, even if Chu didn't rap on it, I, I could probably still make that fit just from, just from the, the repeated verse of the hook, yeah. it still had a anthem, kind of urban, kind of feel, like not, not suburban. It was like between right. suburban and urban, what's, what's that? Uh, mid, That's it, it's, mid, it's a place mid, in mid between. Time. It's just like, you know, yeah. where magic happens, I think. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, I think we, we sometimes get too stuck in our genres and we're like, no, yeah. no, no. I remember right. one time we did this great song called Whiskey Rain and, and um, I said, this is what we should do. We should do a Celine Dion kind of like whole step 
uh, modulation right here. Oh, no, 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 said they. There <laughs> are no modulations in country music. Oh, wow. And I said, I just am feeling it, man. I don't know what the rules are. Right, right. You know, and, and it's and, awesome, of course. <laughs> right. and, and guess what country music sounds like now? Uh, yeah, who knows? I mean, and that's the that's the thing is when you sit in a genre and you just try to like logically figure it out, it, mm -hmm. I think that's when we get all stuck in our heads. Right, right. So what um, software do you use when you do sit at the table also? Uh, well, I use, um, I use Logic Pro and um, I use Melodyne for tuning and then I use um, RX-8 to get rid of mouth noise because a lot of times I do stuff really quietly up close to the microphone and it just mm -hmm. sounds like a smack fest. I mm -hmm. have an AT4033, which is my go-to mic. Okay. Uh, um, I, I'm so excited because Chu and I are releasing a song next Friday oh. and I wrote a string section on it for the first time in my life and I did it all MIDI and I like studied how to like make it sound like at, as real as you can in that situation. Right. So, right. um, I just did that in, uh, you know, in a, mid, in a MIDI and a MIDI keyboard through Logic oh. using some of the sounds. And I think I may have used, uh, what's the name of that company that has sounds? Ugh. Is that Composer, you want to say, or? Uh, no, like, um, no, it's, it's yeah, it's something like that, but I, I can't think of the name of it right now. But um, yeah, just for the different sounds, I think one of the instruments sounded a little bit realer because it had a bit of a slap to it. Oh, wow. String wise, you know, so it just sounded a little bit more real. That's cool. But yeah, Lodge is really, really um, grown up. Um, their guitar sounds, the, the acoustic guitar sounds really nice, especially with the, um, there's, they had two of them, that's how much I used it. They have the guitar and then they have yeah. the, the strum or the fingering sound. Also, you could layer on top of it. So it oh, sounds cool. like people are actually like the tweak, you know, how you know, guitar plays and then you hear the squeaking sound. Yes, yeah. Logic has worked really hard to make it sound realistic. That is so cool. I'm going to try that. I mean, I don't really have to do any guitar stuff. My husband plays. He's an amazing guitar player. So we usually mm -hmm. do it live. We'll do acoustic or whatever. But nice. one time in Logic, I got this idea. We were, the, the challenge um, in the Sync Cafe was to reimagine Take a Walk on the Wild Side. <laughs> and I got this idea that we should make it this creepy kind of circusy, sort of like, like the island of lost boys kind of, you know. <laughs> and so I thought, well, we gotta have a calliope in there. So right. I made a calliope out of like two different flutes and like this weird organy thing, and then I made it kind of like. Ree, ree, ree. Wow. Super fun. I could sit in there all day and play with this stuff, you know. Did, did you save that? Oh yeah. I, I never finished it because we got a mixed review on it, but I think I, I think I need I know how to rework it. I just never got to it. Okay, yeah, because you, you that's sound design right there. You're designing sound. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it was totally cool.